Uh, in the last uh, decade, really, uh, we've seen a great increase in the amount of data that's available for, for use in social science problems, say academically, but then from the point of view of public policy uh, to, in order to make the world a better place, say, broadly construed. So the, the question is, uh, how can we integrate these data and then uh, make them useful for b creating better policies, better laws, better government? Uh, and uh, one important way to do that is to is to have these data, which are typically data about individual people, individual institutions, individual business firms, have these data uh, combined in such a way that they can then be incorporated into a model. And then the models can be used to study, you know, how would these uh, individuals, individual people, individual companies, whatever, how would they respond to alternative policies, uh, study different policies, and then study which policies are the most effective, for example. Now, uh, one way to, uh, to do this using high-performance computing is to uh, render them with what are called agent-based models, of which uh, this is uh, something that I've worked on for several years now. And with agent-based models, we typically have a, 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 a very di distributed, disaggregated uh, representation of the world, which uh, the, the data can be used to then uh, inform. And we, we typically will simulate that on high-performance computing architecture of some kind. What we oftentimes find is that the conventional architectures are not that suitable, and so historically we've, we've not been able to use things like, for example, vector supercomputers, vector hyper HPC. But in, the, in, more, in more recent years, in the last four or five years, there have come online a, uh, a growing and uh, uh, interestingly um, heterogeneous collection of computing resources which give us the chance to uh, make models at a, at a much more finer scale, finer grain, uh, more relevant for policy than, than we ever could do before. And uh, these models would involve having, typically having very large uh, shared memory space for which we could have the models running, uh, and then large numbers of cores on which we can have our individual agents operating. And the, the, and the, the combination of the, of the shared memory and the individual cores mean, means that we can represent very large systems involving hundreds of millions of agents, for example, t today. So there are really two kinds of challenges today, it seems to me. There are one kind of challenge is purely computational, and then one kind is uh, getting uh, policymakers to take up the results of them. So let me address them separately and say when it comes to purely computational challenges, uh, one, one issue that I mentioned is that as we've, met, as we've moved away from the so-called vector supercomputing machines into th more heterogeneous architectures, that's made things m more useful to us. But it's still the case that we don't have a, uh, we don't have a a computing architecture that looks a lot like the social architecture. I mean, ultimately, all of us are our own computers. All of us are individual computers. And we would like to have something that's much more uh, decentralized, uh, distributed, uh, fine-tunable at, at, at the microscopic scale, where still it is the case that even though we have large-scale HPC facilities, they still run, for example, by one operating system or by, or by, by certain, certain centralized concepts that, that are not that, uh, not that easily uh, uh, useful for rendering these kinds of models. For example, just another example would be uh, uh, that um, uh, there are certain kinds of uh, programming paradigms for doing parallel computing, things like um, uh, uh, multi-threaded architectures or other kinds of software products uh, OpenMP comes to mind, MPI, that are not that useful when it comes to, or not as useful as they might be when it comes to doing parallel agents. We need to do parallel agent-based models, and th that really needs to have a, a new kind of architecture. When it comes to how, how the model results can then be uh, used by policymakers, though, it seems that one important technical challenge we face today is that many policymakers don't know how to, what to make of these model results. For example, they may be uh, c uh, comfortable with, doing, with looking at things like regression re re results or we're looking at things like uh, results in a table format. But oftentimes, oftentimes what we can present with our models is we can show them results in some simulation which is very graphical or very visual. And it's not, uh, not obvious that, um, that policymakers these days are good at assembling that kind of information. Maybe they have their lieutenants or they have their, 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 their assistants uh, do the assimilation. And then the policymaker misses the main point of the, of the, of the results. So uh, it seems to me that there are a wide group of, um, uh, there is the, the current, generation of policymakers has grown up with a certain set of tools and what we're going to imagine showing them in the next epoch of time here are different kinds of tools and we need to educate them on how, how to properly understand these tools, the, the results of these models and, the, and these tools.
in order to build the kinds of models that I've been talking about, uh, these individual agent-based models that can be kind of spun forward in time and we can look at alternative, uh, you know, alternative worlds, alternative policy uh, scenarios, one thing is that those models do need to have individual data. And so if in fact we have, uh, if in fact there were some limitation on the kinds of micro data that we could get, that would be, be potentially a problem. So we do need to have this kind of a, a dialectical connection between a, a data availability, but also transparency. We need to have data on individual uh, actors in an in economy, for example, but we also are, are keen not to, not to uh, violate privacy rules uh, and other things. We don't want to do that. So, so that we need to have this kind of a sufficient, sufficient openness uh, so that we can have microscopic data, but not so much openness that, that it hurts, uh, hurts uh, individual people, individual citizens in the long run. Once we have those data though and we can build models, then it seems like the, um, the natural way to, to interpret your question from the point of view of policymakers is, is to say that we can imagine a world where, uh, where we're going to, where you, if you have a very accurate representation of how the, say, the economy works, we can then look at, we can, we can spin the, the economy forward under different policy regimes. Under one policy regime, it produces good things. A different policy regime produces maybe potentially bad things. And now we can, instead of having the policymakers, in essence, have to have mental models for how they believe the world's going to unfold, we can let the model activity, the modeling approach, can, can provide them the scenarios. And they can then, say, just pick between the different scenarios. Uh, so we imagine this kind of digitally enabled, kind of computationally feasible uh, 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 creation of new policy is something which is, we don't do that today and which, is, which could be a, a, a radically uh, uh, advantageous way from the point of view. We can actually have policy evolution can happen much more rapidly now. So where now we, we, we'll make a policy, it'll have a bad effect, we'll change it, it'll, have a, we'll, it'll, it'll fix the problem it, it was meant to fix, but then it will cause another problem. This, 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 uh, these evolutions can take many, many years to unfold. We can imagine that being much more rapid when we can do it uh, computationally. We could also imagine uh, simply the fact that um, it's v typically very expensive to do an experiment in the real world uh, and when it involves real companies or real people, it can be costly from the point of view of individual careers or something. We imagine being able to do this much more rapidly computationally when, we, when we're only, only dealing with our artificial people instead of real synthetic people. Now to, to, make, to carry this off, we'll have to, have to train uh, policymakers and uh, and you know, uh, you know politicians, as it were, to better understand uh, how these models work, to to not put too much emphasis on things like point estimation, saying like you know this is the this is exactly the way the world will unfold, but rather to think about the world from the point of view of having many different possibilities, and which uh, which their job as a policymaker is to look for ones that are that produce high levels of human welfare, for example. <laughs>